What's up, everybody? It's Jason back with Campbell's Music Rig Review. We've changed the name to Rig oh, Review right on. for right uh, on. copyright purposes. But anyway, <laughs> we're on episode 49. It's been a couple of weeks since we've done one of these. We've, you know, we've had, you know, life gets busy. You know, Absolutely. people got things to do. And But uh, uh, this guy we had scheduled a while back. And I, how long ago was it? Maybe uh, October. October? It was like the uh, 12th or something. Yeah. So. You know, they're, they're fell off a, my roof. <laughs> oh yeah, fell yeah. off your roof. There's an incident broke, involved. Broke this leg twice. Broke this heel. So uh, yeah, yeah. He like calls Jason on the way to the hospital. And he's like, "Sorry, I ain't gonna be able to make it to the." <laughs> I'm like, "Dude, <laughs> that's no big deal at all." Can't immediately cancel all the gigs <laughs> yeah. and all the prior engagements. Yeah, yeah. But we're glad you're back on your Me feet too. Me too. and walking. <laughs> and uh, that was a big ordeal. And uh, yeah, we we might talk about it later. Or yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, Josh Cavender. And uh, man, we're so glad to have you on here. Episode so forty nine, yeah, this yeah. yeah, forty nine of these things, and uh, we're going to talk about this impressive setup that y'all see here. <laughs> Maybe the one of the biggest rigs we've seen since uh, Scott of Death Nebula there, it's Asheville, yeah. and uh, you know him all, also coming to the Tri Cities from Asheville. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. We've got a great hub here, yeah, for music. So you don't have to go far to see a lot of good shows, for sure. Yeah. And uh, if you go see so see shows lately, you've probably seen Josh in a lot of different projects. Uh, the main project probably Pixel Vision. You and Amanda, yeah, and Fritz and Company. Fritz We've and been Company, pretty busy. Yeah, uh, those cats out of uh, um, Virginia, uh, Abingdon. Yeah, yep, yeah. We've we've known Logan quite yeah. quite a long time. They're great, uh, great got, people. Got connected with Logan through Andrew Scotchy and in the I River Rats. Yeah, I think he's just going Andrew Scotchy now. This some Nashville guys. Yep, yep, Nashville. Yep, and a nice rock and roll band. Uh, and I'm also playing with the Johnson City Jazz Collective. And that's and a, uh, band Moonrunner. Moonrunner. That's that, that's Jazz the kind of new thing you're talking yep. about. Yeah, yeah. Can't wait to see what that brings. We're We've been uh, booking the uh, Bruising Tunes for Jonesboro. Okay. Yeah, we're doing uh, consistently. It'll be the third year. Um, but we're not playing too much. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Been busy with some other stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. And I know Logan and him play a lot. So. Yep. Fritz probably. I think he's been a, a manager too. Oh booking yeah. Agent. Yeah. So. Yeah, be even more busy. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we've got a lot to talk about today. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, since you've got this guitar on, I, we'll just start right there with that guitar, and you can you tell me a little bit about it, and it's a very cool piece. So, um, I uh, in my life of guitar playing, I. Played a bunch of different brands, honestly, and uh, I really was fond of Ibanez, 70s Ibanezes. And uh, this is the same design as an Ibanez musician. They started in 1978 to 82. So just for affordable price, uh, I went with this instead of a real Ibanez. But it's a Greco, 1977. It's a Go 700. Yeah. Yeah. Made in Japan, probably, yep. like you said, Ibanez bought the. Bought the I think they bought the design. design. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, got quite a b bit of tone options here, um, which I definitely love. For any any more options, <laughs> <laughs> more options better, right? I'd like to think so. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, you're running that as you mentioned earlier through this pedal board to kind of make you sound like maybe the what you do on I, the synth. Yeah, exactly. I've become obsessed with synthesizers, and uh, I what I started playing guitar. Uh, in 2002, played in a bunch of bands when I was younger and uh, got to college in like 2006, seven. And uh, people I was playing with, uh, it was really good musicians, really good guitar players, and nobody played piano. Okay. So uh, yeah. I volunteered myself and started playing. And uh, so I didn't, I really stepped back from guitar. So when I started getting back into it, I just was obsessed with that tone. Yeah. And I was like, I wonder if I can kind of accomplish that on guitar. And I feel like it's been pretty successful and no synth pedals. I, I, they're not bad, right. but I think 
you know, keeping more of the organic sound of the guitar for sure is uh, what, more of what I'm into. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So like running out of that guitar and, and we'll kind of go through your pedal board here. Yeah. Uh, you know, as everybody else we've had on the show starts with a tuner. Yep. Most absolutely. important pedal on your yep. board. Uh, you got the Boss TU2. Yeah. And then from that, just kind of run through your chain and what everything uh, does. Remake, Electro Harmonics, uh, the Attack Decay pedal. Um, it definitely, a, I've never played the original, but it definitely uh, does a great job on the swell, the slow attack. I got you. Yeah, yeah, which is another synth, synth thing. concept. Yeah. And then you can get the Decay to drop quickly. So, uh, yeah. It's hard to explain, kind of like, like a slow gear kind of thing. Yeah, like, yeah exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, know what you're I feel about. like the case kind of hard to explain. It it's is like the yeah. drop off point, I guess. Um, and then next to that, I have uh, the way huge conspiracy theory. It's a clone clone. Uh, I wanted to see what the big hype was about, and I honestly really like it. Yeah. Uh, as a kind of clean overdrive. Yeah. Um, and then next to that, I've got the JHS uh, Bonsai and uh, the Tube Screamer. That's a multi Tube Screamer effects pedal. It's got uh, like every Tube Screamer yeah, mod in it. Yeah. I believe he's got the Keeley mod on there yeah. too. And so since I've played guitar and started using distortion pedals, I've always loved the Ibanez Tube Screamer. Mm -hmm. And uh, a couple of friends of mine had the Keeley mod ones. I was obsessed with oh, yeah. the tone. And. Uh, Again, out of the price range, and here's JHS for the save. Yeah. And I actually prefer the JHS setting the most. The most of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And I've noticed, too, like, everybody that runs, like, a Klon style pedal. Yeah. They stack really well with another they overdrive. Do. Like, yeah. if you're using it to boost an overdrive, it, like, just makes it huge sounding. So. I was out of the game for a long time with <laughs> pedal. Like, yeah. I didn't, like, I had the piece of wood forever. <laughs> yeah. But not a real pedal board, and... uh so I think that just that JHS show on YouTube, the whole thing they got going, I I I don't know. I love his opinion. That yeah. Josh the owner, I really do. Yeah. Uh, I'll I'll take it. And uh he said he doesn't like it when people use it as a light overdrive. Yeah. Uh, the Klon type. Yeah, I've heard him say that too. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, that's exactly <laughs> what I'm gonna use it for. <laughs> But and then so yeah, love the bonsai and the conspiracy theory. Well, another thing, Josh from Jason, who yeah. said the conspiracy theory was his favorite clone clone. So oh, there you go. That. Yeah, taking his opinion. So uh, uh, yeah, Josh next, Scott, if you're watching this, right? Uh, maybe some. We got our own show over here. Yeah, yeah, we're trying to convince people to buy other stuff. We got a lot Not of really. JHS. We got a lot of up in the, yeah. We are a JHS dealer. That's so right. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Can buy anything you need from them. Really nice pedals. Uh, the quintessence I've got next to that, it's a uh, harmony pedal by TC Electronic. Uh, the main band I play guitar in is Pixel Vision. Uh, it's a duo. I, we play the backing tracks. So being the only, uh, besides my girlfriend is the drummer, mm -hmm. uh, I would I love to do harmony concepts because mm -hmm. I'm the only player. And I can't quite play keys and guitar at the same time. So uh, that I think is... a on the market one of the best harmony pedals i haven't tried them all but yeah 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 i've, I've heard that one before it it tracks really well absolutely yeah, yeah that's cool uh it's great blend mm -hmm. um has that latch thing where you can kind of like i think what are those freeze pedals You're right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and then next to that i have the eddie um electro harmonics again uh it's a analog chorus and vibrato and i just used the vibrato on it Gotcha. Uh, for another concept of synth, uh, I just love that LFO wiggle. Yeah, you can get wobble, the slow yeah. one. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and then uh, to, as fast as it'll max out. Right. And then uh, the Roland EV5 is the thing controlling the rate of the um, vibrato. Okay. And then next to that, I have a ghetto rigged Digitech Whammy. Uh, <laughs> there is a spring in it. So that I can get real realistic like whammy effects without actually having a whammy bar. I got you. Yeah, it, I remember I, you telling me you like modified that. Yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah. There's a, again uh, this guy on YouTube, um, just a nobody. I don't remember his name, but uh, just stumbled upon his video, and I just I was like, I wonder if I could pull that off. And uh, I took 
took a couple like rubber pieces from the bottom of an old keyboard and glued them in there with a spring and it worked. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, Digitech Whammy is, should, should probably be on everybody's board. Absolutely. You know. I, uh, it does kind of rule it out for using anything but the dive bomb effect because right. uh, I can get it down all the way, but it doesn't necessarily like it. Yeah. Right. Spring in there. So you're so just using it straight I kind of as kick that. It. Yeah. yeah, I kind of kick it most of the time. And then uh, the DD500 next to that, uh, I've seen people say they're too much. Uh, I Because we're playing the backing tracks, mm -hmm. I love being able to uh, dial in a BPM yeah. and uh, seeing it on the screen, having all those presets yeah. is really ideal for me. Yeah. Yeah. We used to, we, we sell the, the boss here too, the, the DD500, the RV500, all those 500 yeah, series. Yeah, yeah. And uh, a few of them took off, but yeah, like I said, be able to be able to see all that on that screen. I uh, my first important. delay pedal ever was the DD twenty, yeah. And you can do up to five presets with that, yeah. So looking for a new one, uh, this was the best option for me. I'm a preset guy, yeah. When it comes to that stuff, it's uh, I feel like it could be quite tough to dial in a delay when you're playing live. For you know? sure, yeah. Yeah, tap tempo always, but. Yeah. I don't have time for that. Right. <laughs> you got a lot of things going on here. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And, and then, then a classic at the, the end. The newest edition. Mm -hmm. uh, I came here yesterday to fill the spot because my wah broke. Uh, the uh, MXR Phase 90. Can't go wrong. No. Honestly. I yeah. mean, honestly, it's it may be the best phase out there. Absolutely. It's, yeah. It's been simple. around. It's with, simple. All, with everything that is on this board, <clears throat> it's nice to have something with just one knob. Keep it simple. Heck yeah. And then... Coming out of that and the the amp you're running, a Fender. Yep. Uh, Fender little Blues Junior. Blues Junior Tweed here. Yeah. I mean, it's I think that lightweight. You know that and the hot rod may be Fender's number one selling amps. Absolutely. Uh, for the last few years, anyhow. And uh, all tube enough enough power to gig with for sure. And uh, great tone. Do you run like reverb off of it or just use I your pedals? I don't yeah. actually. With all the pedals, it tends to get in the way. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, I wish I could. I wish I had room for a reverb pedal. <laughs> so I, I could turn if I could turn it on and off. Yeah. Then I would definitely use it more. Uh, given that I can't, uh, I've only ever played one gig where that wasn't enough. That amp, and it yeah. was because it wasn't mic'd. Right. I was just competing with bigger amps right. at the gig and the PA system. But yeah, it does the trick for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah, we're micing it with the Sennheiser tonight. So I guess, yeah. man, just run like your clean yeah. tone and kind of demo Absolutely. those pedals a little bit. Yeah. Let's see. Kind of what I go yeah. for with that, yeah. yeah. Just recreating those keyboards on the pedal board with a guitar, exactly. And then I, uh, I'm a big fan of the band Ratatat, and um, I try to kind of with the combination of these get that. Thank you. 
Yeah, that, that's a cool sound. Yeah. It's uh, different. It's, yeah. it's definitely different. Yeah. yeah. I uh, with the obsession with synths and coming back to guitar, I just kind of wanted to be unique as much as possible. Yeah. Not a lot of there's not a big scene here for electronic music, uh, but my piano playing gets me plenty of gigs. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. Yeah. Yeah. If, if y'all seen Pic Pixel Vision, it is electronic music, and yeah. uh, you can see all this in action. If we go. I mean, y'all got music online. We yeah, we have three songs uh, on any platform. Yeah, uh, you can listen to, and we're working on an EP coming in April. Don't know when it'll be finished, but it'll definitely be before the end of the year. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, we've run me and Jason ran sound for them a couple times, and it's yeah. it's very cool. I mean, it, fun. yeah, yeah. Um, it's different. It's not something you hear every day. but nope. it, It's yeah. a lot of fun. It's all in, I uh, a huge instrumental. Guy. I don't we don't sing or anything. Right. I do do the talk box. Uh, I'll display that demonstrate that in a minute yeah but uh that's kind of my way of compromised or like yeah <laughs> i'm just not a good singer honestly yeah not being a good singer i don't know I don't think anyone <laughs> wants to hear that you know? <laughs> hey yeah uh, it's working yeah. for Peter when you Frank. work with good singers too you're like I'm <laughs> yeah uh, uh, i remember going to a peter frampton concert one time and oh he's and he uh he mentioned that he was going to do a song oh, by yeah. yeah he's going to do a song by he well he considered the greatest rock singer of all time yeah but he wasn't going to sing it because he couldn't match that guy's vocals then he broke into black hole sun and the chris awesome. cornell but he, he sang it through the talk box that's awesome so it was pretty cool yeah, yeah we've got pixel vision we're doing a daft punk cover of harder best harder better faster stronger and we are doing a talk box version Talk Puck's version of In the Air Tonight. Okay. <laughs> I'm very yeah. excited for that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I definitely, uh, Amanda uh, wanted to, I, I try to pick things that are fun for her. Yeah. Uh, being a dance uh, electronic band. And yeah. uh, I was like, hey, how, how would you feel? Pick some covers. And uh, In the Air, she was immediately thumbs up. <laughs> on that. <laughs> nice. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So that cool. is the guitar rig. Yep. Pretty much, and uh, very cool rig, yeah. very cool setup. Here's the keyboard rig. We've got a Korg R3 synthesizer vocoder on top. Um, kind of the big brother to the micro Korg, which is a very famous synthesizer. Right. Uh, they're just, any I, a lot of professional, very professional bands still use them. Yeah. Um, I, I would kind of say it's the big brother to that. Uh, and it is the little brother to the R3, or sorry, the, um, the Radius, the Korg Radius, which was a uh, 2000 synth. Uh, th they're not crazy popular. Um, they're, they're an analog modeling synth. Mm -hmm. um, so it's trying to model like an a old analog synth, which I absolutely love that hands-on, right. uh, being able to design all your own sounds and whatnot. And uh, it has a like um, a morphine thing. Where it's like uh, how can I explain it? It's like a, a mod. They call it a mod sequence. So like you can uh, basically uh, things that you would use like a pitch wheel for or the um, modulation wheel. You can kind of uh, preset that so it keeps your hands free. So okay. if you have like a complicated riff, mm -hmm. you can do this mod sequence. And uh, yeah, yeah. Nice. And then I do use the vocoder on it, not live. Uh, it's not the best vocoder for live. It tends to get a lot of feedback. Yeah. But definitely love that synth for what it is. Uh, yeah, that that is kind of coming out of the rave 90s you've, era. You've had that in quite a while. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, just needed something to, in between the uh, analog and whatnot, something that's, it's eight voice, I believe. And then down here, we've got a Moog Little Fatty. It's a monophonic analog synthesizer. This is my first keyboard ever. Uh, my college professor teased me about it because I told him I wanted to play piano mm -hmm. and I bought a monophonic Moog. <laughs> and he was like, you're not gonna learn anything on that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, I'll forever have it. I cherish this thing. It is, Moog is hands down the best synthesizer company um, I hope they stay that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we don't know what the future is at this point, but uh, yeah. I, I saw that they've, they have a new mode coming out. Uh, I don't know if you Super Bowl uh, performance by Usher. Oh, yeah. Their keyboardist was kind of 
unveiling well, a the, new Moog okay. and uh, everyone was freaking out about it. Mm. Looks pretty cool though. Yeah. So I hope they're still on that path of being the best synth company of all time. Uh, this is the best lead synth. Uh, I'm going to be getting a sub 37 soon. The pitch bend on this is a little broken. Uh, it's $150 an hour to get it fixed. Last time I got it fixed, it was only 80 bucks. So I'm being a little hesitant <laughs> and I'm like, it's already, I bought it in 2008. Yeah. So I gigged with it. I since 2008, like yeah. I started playing live immediately when I started playing piano. Um, it wasn't, it was terrible, mm -hmm. but I wanted to have fun with oh, the synthesizer. Yeah. And uh, so it's definitely had seen better days. Um, it's taken quite a few tumbles. One of the oscillators is a little broken, but it's still functioning. It still has a good sound. And then down here, we've got the sequential circuits or just sequential now. It used to be Dave Smith started as sequential circuits. Um, the Prophet Rev 2, it's an eight voice analog synthesizer, DCOs. It's a VCO synth, the Moog, which okay. is voltage controlled which means you have to tune it. Oh, I got you. This, it tunes itself, DCO, digitally controlled oscill oscillators, but still analog. Um, polysynth, uh, always wanted a nice sequential polysynth, and I'm uh, just very happy to have one. And this is what I talk box out of. Uh, great, great for uh, synth wavy, yeah. fill in the space. I don't yeah. know if, if y'all can notice on camera. All I can tell you, it has a lot of knobs. A lot of knobs. Yep. But uh, it's yeah. cool looking. <laughs> very lucky to have that. And then on the bottom, a outdated Nord Electro 2 73 key. Um, still sounds great, but it was, I think there, I don't even think there was an Electro 1, honestly. <laughs> I think they kind of came, right yeah, <laughs> came out of the gate. I could be wrong, but... Uh, yeah, I use it for uh, Fender Rhodes sounds, Wurlitzer sounds, um, uh, Hammond B3, C3 sounds, uh, a clavinet. Yeah. With, uh, it has some built-in effects. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the so best. Any, anything non-synth, that's, yeah. that's where you go. Yep, exactly. Yep. So having the options is nice. <laughs> um, I, uh, was it? Uh, yeah, I hope to get a... Uh, one of those motion sound Leslie speakers for this soon. Oh, yeah. yeah that'd be yeah, cool. Yeah. They're portable. Yeah. So with Fritz and Company, the rock and roll and everything he's doing. I have that uh, Leslie. Yeah, going. I really want to add to that. Yeah. But yeah, let's, uh, yeah, let's, give, let's check it out yeah, here. Check them all out. And... <clears throat> Secure. And the delay you got running up here, is that on just all of them or one of them? Oh, or? yeah. The delay is going through the Moog. Moog, um, I got you. This has built-in effects. This has built-in effects. And this has built-in effects. I got you. So, yeah, this is just kind of a classic kind of concept. Um, let's see here. So, I love, with Pixel Vision, um, one of my favorite things to use this for is the uh, kind of, I think Pink Floyd is the most famously known for these tones. Um, and I believe it was the... Uh, is it uh I'm trying to think of the name now um echoes yeah, yeah um yeah. the it's a road sound with a uh leslie speaker If anybody doesn't know out there, you know, Moog is started and still operating there in Asheville, North Carolina. So if you get a That's chance right. to go tour the factory and it's a pretty cool spot, go check it out for sure. <clears throat> there we go. It's coming out of the talk box too. Yeah, I just. Just classic sounds, yeah. classic tones. Um, I use this in all four bands I'm in. 
uh, I, I think uh, in Pixel Vision, I might just start playing with the three to make it a little easier, yeah. given the guitar. Yeah. Um, because we've more drifted in the <laughs> direction of the electronic Italo disco kind of. Yeah. And I can just, because we're playing the backing tracks, I can just pre-record all that, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, uh, I do love just kind of going off on a Rhodes or Hammond sound, but these tend to do the trick too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can see you play that in the, in the jazz collective a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, they love it. The best mm, organ tones, mm, honestly. Yeah. I feel like uh, Ashley, the singer, would get mad at me if I didn't bring it <laughs> on some of the tunes we do. Uh, I Also, uh, with the jazz collective, I have couple other keyboards um, at home and I have an 88 weighted Roland RD 600 um, and it just doesn't have great organ tones everything else sounds fantastic on it but uh, the organ just uh, some people can't can't right. make that work sample wise yeah. let's see here all right and then so this synth try the the profits box. are just I think very famous in the 80s for a lot of synth pop like Toto, Rain Down in Africa. Um, let's see here. Let's talk box it up. <laughs> pretty pretty uh pretty fun oh yeah 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 um can't wait to get better at it you're I'm an excellent pretty... singer right right yeah at perfect pitch, <laughs> perfect pitch technically yeah <laughs> uh, no, these are, are hard cool. it's like a whole nother instrument honestly yeah. uh it's a uh, quite difficult to pronunciate things that takes a lot of practice yeah i've watched a lot of tutorials um there's this guy lorenzo i forget his first name but uh he's at new york city uh producer and uh keyboardist he's absolutely insane yeah at talk box it's so fun to watch him uh so yeah talk box and this poly synth and then let's get up to the lead never know it's broken uh, right uh, right yeah As, I, actually the oscillator being broken does make it have a, almost a wider sound just some effects when you get into them you can hear immediately it's out of tune so i have to on the spot match the wave typically happens pretty quickly though uh. see why everybody likes those they mean the sound that's coming out oh, of they're just the best honestly i um was contemplating what to get next for a lead synth to kind of retire this and i was stuck for weeks uh between sequential they have a uh lead synth called the pro 3 and it's a three oscillator synth uh with a lot of great options mm. um it's actually th they're known for dco synths uh, nowadays, but it's a VCO synth, like a Moog, um, but it just, I can't, I feel like some kind of, like, attachment to Moog, honestly, that yeah. I just, I, I was like, ah, it just has way more options, it'll be better for studio, live, but you just can't beat that tone, yeah. you really can't beat that tone, yeah, yeah. let's see here, kind of get something going here. This guy. <laughs> 
Um, I do play all of them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I uh, try to play most to all of them uh, at once. I mean, two at once. Uh, yeah. Just to. So basically, you just put that cork in some kind of latch. Really, yeah. Like, uh, typically, if it, if I don't have like a uh, a lead sound going on it, um, it does so many great. Like I was saying, the mod sequence concept. You can just set up sounds that keep moving without your yeah. attention. Yeah. yeah it, it's so, so nice. Um, yeah, it's nice to hear all that stuff layered. It's absolutely. Just, yeah. Just the, you know, and it feels like you can get like really creative on that stuff. So being a duo with Pixel Vision, um, and we're playing the pre-recorded tracks, uh, I never intended on doing that. It's just being in bands, honestly, uh, you, you it's a relationship. It can be tough. Yeah. Uh, if you lose a member sometimes it ruins the band yeah and i was uh just kind of over it with yeah. uh with my own music so right. i'm a i'm hired quite a bit still to this day yeah. uh if you want to hire me mm -hmm. uh, i learn really quick <laughs> <laughs> great on keys um and uh so just getting a band together with amanda i was like hey if we're gonna do this i don't want to like risk losing the band and having to start over constantly yeah so we pull it off with two people so uh, I've yeah. got a uh, I do it with a Zoom L20, uh, use it for backing tracks, yeah. and it has all these outputs, so I can run clicks to our ears, and then yeah, yeah, works out really well. I have uh, up to uh, twenty, I can do up to twenty tracks. Back, yeah, twenty yeah. tracks. So and, yeah. and I, uh, enough from us running sound. Yeah, and we're running those tracks, and then uh, Amanda's drums a lot of times. She has like some trigger stuff on there. Yeah, y'all have to, to like really get. We'll have you to do, get her you do her. drummers, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, but yeah, the whole thing when it comes together is just like, I mean, it's even really if you fun. don't like electronic music, yeah, it's dance you will music. enjoy it. Yeah. I yeah. Think. Yeah. Same. That's my goal is, uh, I kind of was, um, when we started the band, I was, uh, I grew up in Buffalo, New York, and I moved down to Asheville, North Carolina in 2010 with a band named Deja Fuse. And we were a prog rock, uh, fusion band. So I was just always obsessed with Prague and jazz fusion. Yeah. And uh, coming out of that with Pixel Vision, I was trying to find our new sound, trying to, you know, it's, it's Prague and fusion's more of a musician's music. Yeah. Uh, if you're really good at it, you can be popular. You know, a lot of famous Prague and, you know, it's <laughs> definitely a great genre in, my, genre in my opinion, but doesn't take for everybody. Yeah. So I seem to pick the genres that not everybody likes, <laughs> but I definitely love them. Well, yeah. So I've been like uh, getting Pixel Vision on more of a electronic uh, Talo disco sound. Yeah. And kind of straying away from the progginess, uh, just so it's more fun and dancey. Just people get in the yeah. dance and groove. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love it. That's <clears throat> all. All my hope <laughs> is to get people to dance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like I said, you know, Josh is in a thousand bands like most musicians in this area, and uh, he is for hire if you need some yeah, great keyboard if ever, work. If you ever need some keys, and yeah. uh, we've, I mean, we've worked with him a bunch, and I can't tell you there's there's a not a finer failure on earth, and we Thank appreciate you. you shopping here with us absolutely. here at Campbell's, and absolutely, he's moved to the area recently, and. <laughs> Amanda, but he comes here all the time. My, Amanda's friend. My here. girlfriend. Yeah, she grew up and she spent a, a, a lot, lot of time. Of, a lot of time. And so I was so happy when I moved here. Mm -hmm. She gave me the tour and this place means a lot to her. Yeah. It really does. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. She said so, she used to sit. Uh, her stepfather worked at the uh, newspaper place. So she'd spend whole days, days in, in here, here helping people pick out sticks and stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, well, that was before me, but Scott yeah. and Dave, like, they knew her when growing up, you yep, know, so. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll definitely have to get her in for the drum yeah. drum review. I, I, uh, for our band, Pixel Vision, I uh, talked her into getting the rolling drum machine and whatnot. To, mm. uh, we have triggers, so she's triggering 808 samples yeah, as we're playing. Great. Uh, it's a lot of fun, yeah. Adds to that dance kick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So y'all check out Pixel Vision. Check out some of their music they got online. Check out Fritz and Company, uh, Logan and uh, McKenna and yeah. these guys. Uh, got a bunch great. of uh, gigs coming up with uh, Johnson City Jazz Collective. We play every Sunday um, at Wonderland downtown okay. J Johnson City here. Um, we've got the Johnson City Jazz Festival coming up on the, uh, I believe, the 21st. It's a Thursday. That'll be a uh, three-day event. 
Um, our night is free. We'll be playing at the Wellington okay. uh, for free on Thursday night. And uh, there's two more days of that. It's great. Um, Pixel Vision has a private show coming up uh, with some friends. And then we're playing at uh, Gypsy Cider uh, May 22nd. Gotcha. So that'll be my first show back with back. Pixel Vision standing up. <laughs> uh, hurts my feet, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, we're, hey, I'm probably standing up for the whole, right, yeah, for I this whole the thing. Stool in yeah, case, you brought the but, stool uh, just in case. But, yeah. Yeah. You know, like we said, you know, Josh fell off his roof and. Yeah. Thanks for. Kind of broke I, your I feet. Cancel. I'm glad. I'm so glad y'all <laughs> made room for me. No, we, we thank you for coming back and doing it. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. We have a great community of musicians here, and he can attest to that. Absolutely. Uh, you know, a lot of badasses, honestly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, so that's what we're here for. We're here to push local musicians and local music and get it out there and for people that may not have heard it before. Uh, man, I love what y'all are doing. And uh, yeah, uh, we're starting to gain some traction. Absolutely. Yeah. If you want to sponsor the show, call me. And we'll get you some sponsorship, That's right? <laughs> monetize. Yeah. yeah. We'll get monetized. But, uh, yeah. man, is there anything else we can think of to say? Or No, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm just happy to be back up and uh, playing music. And uh, check check out Jazz Collective any Sunday. Fritz and Company, we're all over uh, Virginia and Tennessee and whatnot. And, we'll, uh, we'll throw links all down here for, yeah. you, for all your stuff. So. You want to hear some electronic music? Yeah, come see Pixel Vision. And, yeah. Yeah. Have some fun. And uh, Amanda, I know you'll watch this, so we'll get you on here soon. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for coming. Absolutely. Yeah, all right.